Hi, I'm Francesca Rudkin. Welcome to another Rialto Channel podcast. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Hugh McDonald, director, producer and cameraman of the utterly charming documentary, No Ordinary Sheila. Welcome, Hugh. Good morning, Francesca. Good, Thank you. Good, Good morning. Now, I can see why you made this film. Your cousin, Sheila Natouche, is a remarkable woman. Oh, yes. Um, just about everything about her was unique to her. She was uh, a very interesting and very talented person in all respects. Absolutely. So how did the film come about? How long had you wanted to try and tell her story on the big screen? Well, the answer to that is probably the best part of 20 years. And uh, she, yes, she's my uh, she's my first cousin once removed, as am I who to her, because she is my father's cousin. So it's the uh, it's the uh, that generation. But um, I'd known Sheila all my life, and I'd always found her to be particularly interesting. And for some years recently, I'd been mumbling to my wife at the time that um, I really wanted to make a film about Sheila. And then finally, in 2014, she ha had actually got um, uh, congestive heart disease, which has possibly been caused by earlier early things that happened to her that, that other people wouldn't survive. But never mind, that's, that was, that's in the story. She... Um, she has so many interests, and they're all diverse and not seemingly unrelated, but she had knowledge about and interest in and friends with, uh, with knowledge about all these subjects, astro uh, astronomy, um, the natural world, um, mm. that, uh, natural history, um, ling linguistics. Uh, it just, uh, there, were, there were, oh yes, um, sailing ships were a great obsession of hers. And um, anything that walks, flies, swims, crawls, or just generally sits in a rock interested <laughs> in terms of New Zealand wildlife. Hugh, watching the film, I, I just thought of her as a Renaissance woman. I mean, she was so interested in, as you said, in so many different things. But then she actually um, did something about it. She, she could take her love of painting and illustration and write books about nature and geology and things. Quite extraordinary. Yes, that's right. She did. In the end, she had written somewhere... Between, somewhere between 30 and 40 books, and many of them were very detailed. There was one book, which you'll have seen the story, which she wrote uh, um, documenting and drawing, uh, as I've just alluded to, anything that lives, um, the animals of New Zealand, the book was called, and that book is still um, unsurpassed in its detail and its uh, inclusion of just about everything that that walks around New Zealand shores or flies in the air or underwater. So, um, and, and her artwork is extraordinary. Mm. She's, she's really, really clever at that. But she grew up in, in um, you know, this was, she was born in 1926. Um, her birthday today, tomorrow, um, what is it? Is it um, a Valentine's Day tomorrow? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Her birthday tomorrow. She would have been 92 tomorrow. And um, when she was at high school, or she actually went to high school at the age of 11, but there was two weeks after that she turned uh, 12, which that's still pretty young to be going to high school. Mm. She was asked at school um, what she would like to do when she, when she grew up, and she said, uh, quite honestly, she would like to be an artist or an author or a writer. And they, so they just laughed and said, you can be a school teacher, a receptionist or a nurse, and that's it. <laughs> uh, very she, limited, she, limited um, choice there. And she certainly defied them. Tell me, how did she feel about a camera following her around? Uh, <laughs> well, since she knew me well, she didn't mind, but she did complain in a letter to my sister in England that, quote, Hugh is wearing me out, chasing me around my house with his camera. <laughs> Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, we had been we we were filming for the best part of three years. Right, so it, it was a long project. Mm. 
And Hugh, there's a lot of archive footage and photographs and things in, included in the film. How did you source all that? Was was that through family? Um, most of it, so the photographs were through family. The movie footage uh, came from several sources. Most of it from a from New Zealand film unit sources, so Archives New Zealand. And I knew of some of the films, and my producer Christine Dan. Um, researched what other material may be may have been relevant to Stuart Island and Sheila's life on it, and there are other films that came from a collection filmed on the island by a uh, a very passionate English, um, gosh I've forgotten his surname George Turner. Yes, he was a he was a military man who came to live in Stewart Island in the 1930s, and he was a, a very very um, a very very proud um, photographer, and he was a, he he shot everything he shot was in 16 millimeter film, and he shot all the wildlife around the shores of of the island, and uh, many of the uh, scenes in Half Moon Bay, uh, now known usually by the tourists as its original name, Oban, but Half Moon Bay is the bay upon which it sits. And um, the, George Turner shot a lots of material of boats and people in the way of life at the time, so that actually gave us quite a resource. And we haven't used a fraction of that footage. There is a lot more. But it was quite a process getting it and transferring it and... Uh, Mm. Grading it and the rest of it, but um, yes, it it makes a heck of a difference to the overall story. No, it absolutely sets the scene. And the other thing um, are the letters that are involved in this film, Hugh McDonald, and how and how important they are to telling the story, especially with uh, her relationship with Janet Frame. Yes, the her, the story of her friendship with uh, Janet is pretty well unknown outside of her university compatriots in the 1940s. And um, many people who've heard of Sheila say did, we, they, did, they had no idea that they were they were best friends really. They, mm. And they you know they they shared each other's troubles and they were they read each other's manuscripts and uh, I think at one stage that's right. Um, uh, Janet was living was staying on Frank Sargeson's um, guest house, whatever it was, and. Sheila went from she at this stage she'd been living in Wellington. She went uh, up to Auckland to visit Janet, and Janet gave her um, the manuscript for Hours Do Cry. This this story's in the film, and she read it on the train, overnight train, on the way back to Wellington. But then later on, which we didn't go into in this story, was that Sargeson demanded the manuscript script back, which in fact it was going back anyway. And uh, he seemed to be a rather possessive about his protege. So um, he said to, in a letter to Sheila, that J Janet doesn't like other people reading her manuscripts. Well, Janet did like her best friend reading the manuscript, but that wouldn't, that uh, probably wouldn't have mollified Frank. She, Sheila, has such a delightful way of telling. A story, and really, it's her voice and perspective that makes this film so charming. Would do you think you would have been able to? Of course, it was uh, the film screened at the New Zealand International Film Festival, and it was a little bittersweet because a couple of days later, of course, Charlotte, uh, Sheila died. Do you think you could have made this film after Sheila had died? No, you put your, you, you're absolutely right. Um, no, she, we had to carry on with it, start it, and finish it. Um, before the final event, yeah, no, it was, um, and the right from the start, I had an idea that I'd want uh, Kim to interview her, because uh, in 2007, um, I'd, Sheila had been interviewed by Kim, and so had I, for different reasons. Kim had got uh, Sheila had got the uh, uh, New Zealand Order of Merit, and I'd got This Is New Zealand restored and into the film festival from the. Uh, <clears throat> for 2007, from the original three three strip um, um, pro film that existed, we managed to combine it onto one strip that would work in any cinema, and that was couldn't be done till the digi uh, digital age. 
Mm. And um, and I, that's what I was talking about. And and, and at the end of um, Sheila's interview, I heard uh, Kim say, "Well, Sheila, Sheila Natouche, uh, you have led a very interesting life. Have you written your autobiography?" "No," said Sheila. "But there's a lot of stories about my life in in my books." "Well." Sheila said, Kim, I want you back in my studio a year's time from today, and I want you to bring your autobiography with you. Well, that didn't happen, but uh, another seven years later, in 2014, a similar thing happened, and I was again on Kim's show. And I talked to her, and I said, you know, you wanted to make this... uh, have an interview with Sheila about her life. Well, what I'd like to suggest is that you talk to her again, as you did last time, and we film that and use it as the continuing link throughout the film. And um, so that's what we did. And I think Kim does her role extremely well. And in fact, you can see... um, Right, uh, when you're watching the film, you get a totally different impression from listening to it on radio mm. because you can see them interacting with each mm. other. And you can see Kim gazing fondly at Sheila and laughing at her jokes. So it is, it works very well, I think. No, absolutely. Hugh, I um, was trying to track down some of Sheila's books. They're actually quite hard to find. Um, well, I th- if you want to, if, if there are any particular titles you want, uh, we've got quite a few of them here because she had made reprints of some of her books and uh, if you like I will um, I will list them and you can choose some of them we'll just post them to wherever you want them oh that's fantastic I'll definitely take you up on that offer look thank you so much for joining us today Rialto Channel is thrilled to be playing No Ordinary Sheila I really do think that Sheila is a national treasure so it's wonderful to share this film Yes, well, and thank you, about, thank you for that. I would, I would like to point out that the DVD we still have the DVD um, is available from my website if people are interested in buying it because uh, many people have seen it on the airlines and immediately got back to the countries they were flying to, Australia or or Canada or the USA or England, and ordered copies. So, looking at a uh, film in the back of. Uh, a back of the chair of the person in front of you didn't reduce their desire to, on a tiny screen, didn't reduce their desire to see it again, mm, but mm. in a better format. So uh, I think this could be very helpful to us. Yeah, what's your website, you? It's um, www.hughmacfilm, uh, all one word, H-U-G-H-M-A-C-F-I-L-M, at dot co dot nz, but there is also another one, the link together, um, which is just the No Ordinary Sheila page, and that's uh, www uh, www dot um, No Ordinary Sheila, or one line dot Brilliant. co dot nz. Fantastic! Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thanks for calling, uh, and I really enjoyed it.